everything I overate. Every single shot that I'm thinking, John Wick. Every loss got a lesson, every make got a miss. Huh? I can't even think of a man that had me terrified. Huh? We got options, pick your poison or just pick a side. Pick your side, pick your poison. Pick a side, pick your poison. Pick a side, pick your poison. Ain't no picking on me, y'all about to get me going. Yo, pick a side, pick your poison. Pick a side. We're more than just a financial institution. We're listeners, storytellers, and builders of relationships. We understand that everyone's financial journey is unique, and we're here to hear your story. Borrow together, save together, you're part of our family, and you're invited to become part of our community. Together, we'll create a brighter financial future for you and your family. Michigan Coastal Credit Union, where members come first, always. 
City. I am the owner of Underpar Golf, which is an indoor golf facility here in um, Muskegon, Michigan. We have over 85 different courses you can play. Six screens, five flat, one curve. We got top golf games that you can play. We got some virtual mini golf courses, some fun little chipping games like darts, beer pong, cornhole. Just a fun guys' night, bachelor parties, company parties. You name it, we'll host it. We also do lessons, uh, club, bidding, club building, club repair. Uh, fittings, you name it, anything about golf, we're able to pretty much do here. and gentlemen, welcome to the Foundry! And now, it's time to introduce your West Michigan Ironman. Access granted. Yet, this is all part of the plans. 
What's going on, Iron Nation? Welcome back to the Trinity Health Arena. My name is Trevor the Dude Tozlowski. I am joined in the booth by Coach Mike Taylor. Coach, it's been a long off season, but we are back and ready to rock and roll. How have you been? We defend the title tonight, Trevor. Yes, sir. And, and you. You are no longer single. You are now off the list because you're married. Yes, sir. Last time you guys would have heard me, it was prior to the marriage. Happily you had the shakes, now. yes, and you were in counseling at the time. <laughs> They've worked it through it, and congratulations. That is awesome. Hey, uh, you. And you guys, are, you guys are located over in the Grand Rapids area. Yep, yep. Good. Yep, we're, uh, yeah, she's not here tonight, couldn't make it tonight, but... Yeah, it's been a great year so far. You've got her working. That's yeah, absolutely. Um, that's awesome. Well, uh, ticket sales. How about that one for tonight, Trevor? I, uh, the rumor is we are going to have what could be a record crowd for the Ironman here tonight, Coach. Well, and as we are talking right now with seven and some change before the game, the uh, Tri-State Bucks uh, have come out, and uh, they are represented here with a few fans, Trevor, so this will be their, I believe, their first game of their existence. Yes, I think they've operated at some different levels. This will be their first time in an environment like this, and I think it's going to be creep. You know, you, you Coach, you've been around for a long time. How difficult is it for a team to go into a hostile environment and perform up to expectations? Uh, this is extremely difficult because you're not just coming into an environment uh, one that's hostile, okay, with a good crowd, vocal crowd, but you're playing a, a, ch a league champion. You know, you're going up against a champion, and so that makes it uh, twice as hard. And when you look at the obstacles here, uh, this Tri-State Bucks team, uh, they're, <clears throat> let's just say what, the, you know, what, what I would say some goals they have set for themselves. The, you know, I don't know if uh, being as, playing against this kind of competition if, if this is a winnable game for them. But they definitely got some things they need to accomplish here tonight to be able to move forward and progress in this league. Yeah, definitely, Coach. I think the first thing that you want to talk about is surviving the environment. How many teams that have you see, have we seen in the last couple of years come in here and immediately get ran right out of the building? Well, and again, it's, it's just because the talent level and the experience that the Muskegon team brings in here, the Ironmen, uh, it's off the charts. And they are well organized. You know, they are organized. They are, uh, you know, experienced players, coaches, and uh, the fans expect nothing but the best. So it is, it, you know, it's a whiz-bang affair right here tonight. It sure is. Let's see player intros here. Just a moment. And the lights are dim, Trevor. The spotlights are out there. We've got 26 cheerleaders out there. We do. Definitely gonna be, uh, it's always tough when you're the champion. Everyone's gunning for you. I feel like that's been the case for the Ironmen for nearly their entire existence. They've been the hunted. What does it take for a team that looks like they might be outmatched physically and skill-wise to stay close in a game like this? Well, and, and you know, to your point, I have not, and I've been down here for, I don't know, two years, three years, I've not seen yet a team that really has come in here with better talent, oh, you know, top to bottom in the roster as the uh, Ironmen have put together. And again, the big thing now is we lose Nick, Nick the Cracker has decided not to come out. Yeah, definitely. You know, and Nick's got the, three little kids at home, uh, stay-at-home wife, and uh, things are getting real. And, you know, sometimes when you're out there playing in a game like this, you got a lot more to lose than you do to gain. Yeah, definitely. There's going to be some some faces that won't be here. You mentioned Nick the Cracker. There's also going to be some returning faces that the team's going to recognize. And that starts with Derek Vandenbosch and Alex Carter, the two captains of this team. Absolutely. You know, I look at, uh, you know, then you, you look at Nick the Cracker making a real hard line decision to, you know, to give up playing when, when he's as healthy as he's ever been and as strong as he's ever been. But then you look at the, on the flip side, you know, you got Alex Carter and what he and his wife are going through and family. And, uh, you know, Alex is still out here playing. And, uh, you know, Alex is a, a, a sales rep for, a far, I believe, a, a medical company. So, you know, good for Alex. And, and he's got a passion for football like none other. Not only a passion, but an IQ. And, and you hear IQ 
cue thrown around a lot for guys that are skilled players, but he really does get the indoor football game extremely well. Yeah, what a crowd. Yeah, R rumors of a 2,500 fan pre-sale, which would be outstanding. And, and as the Ironmen come out here, getting ready for the introduction of their starting lineup, I look over at the Tri-State Bucks, and they are just standing quietly in awe of what's going on here. Yeah, this, this experience is not for the faint of heart. Most of these guys have never played in an arena like this. They look With at the them. the kind of production that is involved in a player introduction like this. Well, and again, the, big, the key tonight is for the uh, you know, the Iron Men to play up to their expectations, and uh, you're going to see a lot of new faces in and out of there. Uh, Joe Tannis has got, uh, you know, a couple different groups defensively. He's going to rotate in there, get him some experience, wants to be able to see him on film and evaluate him, and, uh, you know, continue to see him grow and develop. Yeah, I guess the last big thing to touch on, this is game one of the Terry Mitchell era for the Iron Men. Coach Nate Smith taking a step back. Yeah. We see Jamal Abbey, our first player introduction. Number one, number one, John Ross. Beginning his fifth season with the Ironman, a Bulldog from Adrian College. He goes by Big Sexy, Big Country, and Big Daddy. Number 65, Anthony Younger. The monster in the middle has been wearing the garnet and gold from day one. His biceps have their own zip code, and he's always in beast mode. From Olivet College, number 91, Ryan Armstrong. And now, your 2024 Ironman captains. In just his third year with the Ironman from Concordia University in St. Paul, the 2022 AAL Rookie of the Year, the Iceman, number four, Sterling Alexander. Entering his ninth season with the Ironman. Yes, his ninth season. He continues to be the heart and soul of the Iron Strong defense. An OV Cardinal and a Cougar from the University of St. Francis. Three-time Defending Player of the Year. The Ironman's all-time leading tackler, number zero, Derek D. Smooth and Bosch. He was the original QB1 nine years ago, and he continues to lead the Iron offense today. Four-time Offensive Player of the Year, 2021 AAL MVP, the returning 2023 GLAF Offensive MVP, originally from Kansas City, but his love for West Michigan has his roots running deep right here. From Western Michigan University, number 14, Alex Carter. The Ironmen are coached by Rob Zeitman, Dame Gregory, Jabbar Mayhew, Joe Tannis, and head coach Terry Mitchell. Let's hear it for your West Michigan Ironman. I know Rob Zeitman real well. Do you? Yeah. He was a bodyguard for the president. Go anthem. Tonight's game is made possible by the sacrifice. We got some major changes uh, in the uh, front of our office armed here, forces Trevor. From across the globe. Let us honor Yeah, those. definitely. Some new faces, both on the bench. I guess we were saying before the player introduction starts. We'll come back to that here in just a second. Got it. And veterans, you are encouraged to assume the proper salute as we sing our national anthem. Tonight's anthem is being sung by Fruitport native Natalie Ruffner. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, who's 
with broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting Spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, Natalie. For Coach, I know we mentioned in the pregame what this crowd might be. Now that people are taking their seats before we're getting started here, it, it, it might be the most full I've ever seen it. This place is fit pure pandelirium here, Trevor. It absolutely is. <laughs> like I said, first game of the Terry Mitchell era, Nate Smith stepping down, former offensive coordinator, Ironman player Terry Mitchell stepping in. He's a guy that's been around for a long time. How much of a difference do you think there will be between Coach Smith and Coach Mitchell? Uh, you know, I really, I don't think, I don't anticipate uh, major changes. You know, you got Alex Carter out there running your offense, okay? And I think they, they're they well established in how that whole process offensively is handled. So, you know, I, I, I don't, and Joe Tannis running the defense again. We've got some new assistant coaches here, you know, on, on the staff. And I, I really like the addition of Rob Zeitman. You know, he was over there at Jenison for a while. And, uh, you know, Rob was uh, played at the Naval Academy and uh, had a great career. He's an unbelievable, uh, his pedigree with football and the content of that man's character is unbelievable. And uh, he played for Coach Uzelak at the Naval Academy and Coach Mike Drake. And, uh, you know, just what a tremendous human being. Yeah, it is just about that time. Looks like the Iron Men are going to receive the opening kickoff. Give that Alex Carter led offense a chance to get points on the board. Well, right this from the get go. And this is very emotional for me tonight because halftime I'm going to propose marriage to Callie, to Callie Schufelt. She's here tonight, so I can't wait to see her at halftime propose marriage. Hopefully she doesn't turn me down. You Fingers know. crossed, Coach. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I don't know. I, I took me a couple of years to work up the courage for this, but that's the only way I could get in the Tannis family was marry into it. So the Iron Men will receive this opening kickoff. Iron Men in all black with maroon helmets. Tri-State Bucks in white jerseys, black pants, and black helmets. Alex Carter looks like he's even lost a couple of pounds this year. He does. Looks like he's in great shape. Yeah, he's in phenomenal condition. So John it, Ross will be back deep to return. Here we go, defending their league title. Your West Michigan Ironman. And you know what? Uh, with this crowd here, congratulations to Mario and uh, the staff here. Oh, my goodness. What a crowd, Trevor. Look at the people down this way. Yeah, electric atmosphere. Donovan Sanchez is going to be kicking off for the box. Back deep for the Ironman, John Ross and Willie Shanks. Underway, kick is going to be short, taken by Zach Watts. 
and he'll be met at the 20 yard line and ended up taken down about the 18 yard line. So the Ironman will have great field position for their first drive. That might have been the shortest opening kickoff I've ever seen in my life. Especially for one that was not unnecessarily intended to be a squib. He looked like he put full power into it. And at, it just first didn't I thought, at first, to Trevor, I thought it was an onside kick. It certainly looked that way. So Carter will lead things off. Davion Taylor will be the starting running back. Bo Johnson at left tackle. Anthony Younger looks like he will start at center. With Doug Woods at right tackle. Wide receivers are going to be John Ross, Sterling Alexander, and Tyler Bruce as the three starters. And here we come. We're airing it out. Touchdown. And it's a touchdown. Iron Man. That did not take long, Coach. It took too long. The short off, the short kick, and then Carter to Ross. And I'll tell you what, that young man back there, Clay Bowens, outside linebacker, there's no way he's going to run with Ross. No. Ben Townsend on to kick. Number 85. That's a great way to start the uh, Coach Mitchell era off, isn't it? Absolutely. Falls down, kick is up, kick is good. So a quick 7-0 lead for the Ironmen. And don't look now, but the Tri-State Buck bus driver just went out to start the truck. Already. Also heard rumors that this may be the best Ironman defense ever. That was in the words of coach, or former head coach Nate Smith. I'm very interested to see what that looks like. Obviously, Coach Tannis going to be leading that unit. Um, very interested to see how that plays out. The, uh, you know, the Tri-State Bucks. They don't have. I mean, they're they're walking around with their heads down already. They don't have the enthusiasm. You'd expect a team playing the opening game of the season. Well, they don't have anyone ready to receive this as though it's an onside kick. They only have six players out there, and none of that. They don't look ready to. If I were Coach T Mitchell, I would signal for an onside kick. They've got two men at the. Yeah. And a referee back here in the end zone blowing the whistle to see what the call ends up being. They're going to re-kick it. What kind of crowd we got, Trevor? Yeah, great crowd. Nate Smith now in a in an, uh, general manager position. All right, we're going to try that one again here. Townsend will be kicking off back deep, number 11, Ace Jones. It's going to be fielded by five, Clay Bowens. Finds a little bit of space and will take it down just near midfield. It's where Damian Santiago, who will lead the Bucks offense out. Zach Watson on the tackle. Zach's back this year. What a tremendous athlete that young man is. Zach is uh, over here selling cars by Cooperville. I tell you what, if he offers you a car, you better take it. Yeah, certainly wouldn't want to argue with him. You'll get a forearm right upside the ear. I like that, Zach Watts. So Santiago is the quarterback. Skill positions, Jay Hershey, Donovan Sanchez. 17 Dominique Parks also there this and might we, this might be the smallest offensive line I've seen yeah definitely not a lot of size there Joe Tannis's heart football team has bigger kids oh there's a big play and just no chance Zach Watts in the backfield for a tackle for loss Donovan Sanchez did not get anything going on that play Donovan Sanchez walked back to the hull and said do not call that play ever again. Yeah. 
Watts right now is leading the league in tackles. Yeah, the first tackle. So in the Ironman defensive backfield, we have Jamal Abbey, Willie Shanks, and Raheem Stokes. Vandenbosch and Watts are the linebackers. Clay Oliver, Ryan Armstrong, and Keith Love, the defensive back line. And he's going to have to take off and run. Picks up about two. There was nobody open. It's going to be third and long. Willie Shanks had one heck of a of a hit right at the line of scrimmage. The receiver coming in motion. Oh. Shanks rerouted him right away. Shanks is the reason we call this place this place Hitsville. Ace Jones will be in motion. Dropping back, San Elgus throw. Right. Vandenbosch. He'll get brought down. Little after the little after the interception action, but that was just not a good play whatsoever. Well, and right now the quarterback Santiago and the wide receiver, uh Hersey are having a discussion about a route that was run. One of them's wrong and one of them's right, but the result was an interception by the Ironmen. Yeah, it was a tough play. It looked like they might have had the corner route open. I just don't think Santiago trusts his offensive line to give him enough time to get the play out. Though same offensive unit out for the Ironmen to start things. Tyler Bruce will be in motion on this first play. Well, we've got, we've got Carter tight. looks. Pump fakes. He's going to scramble. He's still looking. Chased by 80 Stovall. He's wide open. And Sterling Alexander wide open for an Ironman touchdown. Carter, two for two. Two touchdown passes. Sterling Alexander. Boy, he always has a way. He finds a way, Trevor, at getting open, doesn't he? Yes. Yeah, Sterling Alexander, who came in last year and really set the league on fire, is clearly becoming a favorite target of Alex Carter. And, you know, I think that's one of the strengths of uh, Alexander's game is on, on broken plays, uh, Carter can extend a play with his feet, and uh, Alexander has a way of getting open. And those two guys, look, they connect well. Townsend on for the extra point. Kick is up. And... No good, wide to the left. So the score will be 13 nothing Ironman. 10 minutes and 40 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. I'd like to give a shout out to two of our super fans over there. Ario and Atlas coming into the ballpark tonight from out of town, living up in the heart area, here to see uh, the Ironmen play. I hope they get one of these T-shirts, Trevor. T-shirts, do you know that cannon is locked and loaded? <laughs> Effie likes to send them. Looks like we've, he's also got his mascot friend, the Armadillo from Texas Roadhouse in the building. There we go. See if Happy sends one up this way. Coming in hot. He got it. Happy's got a little more power in that cannon this yeah, year. He's got, he's got the uh, the old tank juiced up this year. We've run Thanks. two offensive plays with the Ironmen. We've got two scores, Trevor. Yes, sir. Thanks again to Kadena Brothers Pizzeria for being a sponsor of the Ironmen. Oh, that Kadena, Kadena's pizza. I oh. tell you what, every time I get a pizza, I use whatever sauce is left over. I, I, I use it as cologne. It is the best. Townsend kicks it deep. And it'll go out of bounds. Ace Jones had a shot at it, but he's about eight inches too small. So it looks like the ball will come out 
to. So Damian, Damian Santiago coming back out, trying to get the troops rallied here. See if he can get him a first down. Yeah. So kickoff out of bounds is going to put them off the 20 yard line. So good starting field position for the Bucks. They have not yet gained offensive yardage. Oh, excuse me. They did on Damian's Gregor, or excuse me, Santiago's two yard scramble on second down. Let's we'll uh, see if they can stay ahead of the chains on this drive. Tell you what. Ace Jones will be the man in motion here at the bottom of the screen. This defensive front of Joe Tannis is is total mismatch. Tri-State is not equipped to handle these guys. Look at and this. Just nothing. Oh, and a quick whistle. Quick whistle. Watts and Brandon uh, Bosch in on that play. Santiago just looks like he is no, extremely Sa uncomfortable. Santiago is running right now like a chicken from the colonel. You know. He just has no confidence in being able to be protected long enough to get the ball out. The formation he's calling in the huddle right now is called retreat. I'm like, what can they possibly be talking Oh, I'd love to hear what's going on in that huddle. Jones will be in motion again. They're forgetting to go in motion. There we Fake go. Option and football. Up. And nothing doing. Another ball out after the play. Third and long here coming up for the Bucks, who have not been able to get anything going. Uh, the, the, the Bucks have run five offensive plays, Trevor, and I think right now they're at a minus seven yards. One of the five plays gained positive yards. It was on a scramble by Santiago. The second play of their off the first offensive series. Love to see if they ever feel comfortable trying to throw the ball. I mean, I guess they did on third down last drive and through the interception. And he's just going to be sacked by Ryan Armstrong. No chance for Santiago. It'll be fourth down and six and 15. Yeah, I believe Coach Tannis is going to be able to get a, a good look at a lot of people tonight, get some film on them. But again, I don't know about the quality of the film, Trevor. Right. You know, because they're not getting the looks that they really want to get right now. Throws complete to 17 parks. Well short of the line to gain, but positive yards at the very least. Ironmen will take over on downs, and they will get the ball st starting at Tri-State's 18-yard line. See, and that's a good first down play for them right there. Come out, hit a quick one. If they're going to give a cushion like that, take advantage of that. And that comes with time and experience. And again, the coach has got to be able to see that and tell that quarterback right now, hey, if they're going to play eight yards off, take that quick hitch and take the three to four or five yards and uh, let's get to second down and medium. Yeah, I think they got to try and get something to build on here. All right, so Ironman are back out, have not yet run the ball. Two passes, two completions, two touchdowns for the Ironman offense. Well, right now, the Bucks, are, the Bucks are two players short, three players short. How about that one? Yeah, it's just really inexcusable. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take a quick commercial. We'll be right back, folks. I am the owner of Under Par Golf, which is an indoor golf facility here in um, Muskegon, Michigan. We have over 85 different courses you can play. Six screens, five flat, one curve. We got top golf games that you can play. We got some virtual mini golf courses, some fun little chipping games like darts, beer pong, cornhole, just a fun guys' night, bachelor parties, company parties, you name it, we'll host it. We also do lessons, uh, club, bidding, club building, club repair, uh, fittings, you name it, anything about golf, we're able to pretty much do here. Carter looks, finds Ross. It's going to be a first down. 
Let's see if we get, might be in territory to get Davion Taylor his first rush attempt here. Tell you what, that, that was a nice, nice hit right there defensively by number zero on Tri-State Bucks, but I don't have a name for him. Xavion Johnson. Oh, there he is, Xavion Johnson. Nice tackle right there. Wayne Memorial High School. Oh, so they... 5'11", 170. So it looks like we got first in time. The down marker on the field is incorrect. It is first and goal. Now we're and in a running. And there's handoff to Davion Taylor, who's in nearly untouched. Touchdown, Ironman. In a punch throw. Number 23, TJ Preston for the Bucks Just threw a punch at an offensive lineman for the Ironman. See what the penalty flag it has to be for that, whether or not there may be an injection involved as well. These officials are from the Grand Rapids area, paid very well in this league. I think this is one of the higher paid uh, officiating leagues in the country. They make, I think it's $3,400 a game. So I, I have to imagine they're discussing when it's going to be enforced, but it was certainly a punch from 23 TJ Preston. Whether or not they opt to eject the player will be interesting to see. I, it'll be interesting to see if they press charges. So no, no signal for an ejection. So it looks like 23 avoids being ejected from the game. Townsend will come on for the extra point. Carter down there stretching out. He's the holder. Two for three right now. Snap, hold is good, kick is up. There we good. go. Townsend goes to two for three. The Ironman now lead 20 to nothing. Six minutes, 52 seconds remain in the first quarter. What a crowd, Trevor. Yeah, I'm hoping we can get them to stick around for the entirety of the game, but things have been one-sided thus far. Oh, it's, yeah, and again, the growing pains that the uh, Tri-State Bucks are feeling right now, knowing that they've still got, what, three quarters to play? The owner went? The, Damian Santiago, their quarterback, owns the Tri-State Bucks. That would be like if Mario suited up instead of Alex Carter for our quarterback. I would like to see Mario suit up for one game. That would be quite Mar Mario would hurt people in this league. Himself? Oh, Mario would do it. He'd be arrested, man. Townsend ready to kick it off. Mario's a beast. And it's going to be fumbled. Ended up picking up by Jay Hershey, number three. He'll get wrapped up and taken down at the 11-yard line. Raheem Stokes down there on uh, the first person to get a get a shot at him. Stokes played at Ferris State University. So Rashad Powell, excuse me, Rashad Powell checking in at center for the Bucks, number 61. He's actually a, a local MMA fighter, believe it or not. Really? Yeah. Yep, from the Muskegon area, has a mixed martial arts fight coming up later, I think later this month, potentially. And the Bucks are going to begin first and 10 from the five-yard line. Joe Tannis, his wife, Jill, she just got inducted into the uh, Arena League Football Cheerleading Hall of Fame. Following her uh, induction, I believe, into. Uh, yep, she was the, a high hurdler. Yeah, yeah. She was a high hurdler. And for that, I think she won a lifetime. She gets a lifetime supply of McDonald's milkshakes. 
for that award. Oh, wow. Yep. Uh, looks like we'll have to reset the, sh the, the play clock. Oh, they will call timeout instead. Jamal Abbey goes over to the bench right now to talk a few things over and get a drink. Great job from the Ironman defense. It would be interesting to see if Santiago is able to get anything going. He has not been protected very well thus far. Willie Shanks, you, you look him up in the encyclopedia and there's a picture of him just tackling a bus. Willie Shanks can tackle. Yeah. I mean, you heard it up here on that hit where he, where he jammed that receiver at the line of scrimmage. Willie Shanks, his form tackling is off the charts. He's been taught well. Unique formation here to start from the box. And they did draw the Ironman offsides, it appears. That's the best play the Bucks have run all night. It is. First and five That's, now. You know, when we talk about the little victories for this uh, Tri-State Buck team, that just them showing the poise and discipline offensively right there. That, that's pretty impressive. Good for them. So, first and five now from the 15-yard line as we run near six and a half minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Throw tipped and intercepted. Zach Watts got a lay. Hit a jump, Touchdown, Zach. Touchdown, Ironman. Pick six for Zach Watts. Get out of the way. A couple of times, including by Willie Shanks, and a clear lane to the end zone for Zach Watts. Well, at least he only he only threw it into triple coverage right there. He was actually well protected too. It's just unfortunate they couldn't find anyone open. They used their third receiver as an extra blocker on that play, and thus leaving themselves only two men open with three defensive backs plus a linebacker in coverage. You're gonna have a hard time finding a window to throw the ball. In. Oh my God. If you have to commit five people to block it. The line is down, snap is back, good snap. Right down the middle, Trevor. Three for four, good looking kick. All right, we're gonna take a quick timeout. We're gonna run a video ad. We'll you know, right it, back I, I, you it doesn't look like they're using the white football, Trevor. It all starts with a Chevy truck. Chevy Silverado with the Turbo Max engine and best in class standard torque. And Chevy Silverado HD with up to 14 available camera views. Do more in a Chevy truck. Get yours now. Get $5,000 total value on Silverado LTZ and High Country models when you trade in an eligible vehicle. Or during Chevy truck season, get as low as 0.9% financing in all 2024 Silverado 1500 pickups. Chevrolet, together let's drive. We'd like to thank West Michigan Chevy dealers, a proud supporter of the West Michigan Ironman. 27 nothing, coach. We've only played 10 minutes. It's, it's out of hand. And I don't know what the solution is for Tri-State. Well, the one thing right now, uh, Tri-State, you know, I, there's nothing they can do right right now. And, and again, now we just need to maybe run the football a little bit, give the offensive line some work, running back some work. Ace Jones with a pretty solid return, takes it out near the 20-yard line. So, Coach, you look at these rosters, and you mentioned experience on the Ironman. Nearly every player on the Ironman roster played at played collegiately. And co comparison, you look at the Tri-State Bucks, just a couple of these guys with college football experience. It's tough to, to really put these two teams on even footing when there's such a disparity in experience. 
Well, and it's, again, it's not, you know, it, it, it's tough. It's tough because uh, the Ironmen, their hands are tied. As, you know, this is what they get, you know, when they schedule these guys. And, uh, you know, you just hope they're prepared and ready for what they get when they come in the, the house of pain here. So new corner check in. That looks like number six, Ray Robinson. Clay Oliver breaks through immediately and gets the sack. He, need, he needs to go from the shotgun formation 21 yards back behind the center. Doug Woods will check in on the defensive line for Clay Oliver. There's not one thing the Jones Bucks can do. They'll hand off, and he's immediately met in the backfield. Derek Vandenbosch Number takes one, him down Sanchez quickly. Sanchez had no room there. Third and long coming up for the Bucks. Wow. Vandenbosch had a clear run at him. Such a savvy player too. He can he can really tell. He can diagnose the play extremely well and know what's coming almost before the offense runs it. Third down here. They will go from the shotgun. He's got to get deeper. Fumble bobbles a snap. Look at him. Uh oh. And is taken down by Armstrong. <laughs> and you can see he's feeling the pressure because his eyes immediately come down from trying to find a receiver to look at the rush when he starts getting pressure. Well, he's looking at the rush and he, he's looking at the rush, Trevor, because his receivers aren't getting released. You know, they're getting they're getting hit right at the line of scrimmage. And uh, before he can even look at a receiver, he's getting hit. So fourth down and 21 here as we approach two, as we're under two and a half minutes left here in the first half. How do you broadcast this? You know, when we, I mean, we're not, you know, we're not seeing the kind of. Batted down, Armstrong bats it down, and that's a turnover on downs. The Ironman will take over from the Bucks' nine yard line. Be interesting to see. So it looks like we got our on-field event, so we'll turn it down to our PA announcer, Lee, to walk us through the event. All right, Iron Nation, it's time to see if one of quarter. you can beat Effie in tonight's Beat Effie Challenge. Let's welcome Benny the Bullet. Everybody say hi to Benny and his brother, Bryson the Bull. Say hi to Bryson. Tonight, Benny the Bullet needs to hoop three sparks from 10 yards away. Bryson the Bull needs to ring three Iron Men, and old Effie the Foundry Bull needs to ring three bucks. The first one to hula hoop them all is the winner. Let's see who can do it. If you're ready, oh, we gotta get those bucks over here. They're gonna be good sports here tonight. All right, here we go. In three, two, one, fire away. Oh, Effie's got one. We're gonna keep going here. <laughs> Benny working on the Sparks. Bryson working on the Iron Man. Oh, yeah. And it looks like Bryson is our winner. Congratulations to Bryson. 
You want a gift card to Foundry Threads. Good job. Let's give it up for Benny Bryson, Effie, and all the players. Good sports out there tonight. All right, guys, we are back. Thanks a lot to Lee Andrews, our PA announcer, Texas Roadhouse for providing their armadillo, and Iron Nation for cheering on our Beat Effie Challenge. The challenge right now is now in the Bucks court to try and figure out a way to get any stops defensively. The Iron Men have scored on every offensive play thus far. And they haven't had too many. No. You know, too I mean, many four snaps. four touchdowns, four plays. Yeah, four plays, four touchdowns. And right now the best play for the Bucks has been a, an offsides penalty against the uh, Ironman defense. Carter, Carter's going to have Tyler Bruce in motion here. It's going to look that way. And it's batted oh, and intercepted. Oh. Intercepted for a touchback. A rare mistake for the Ironman. That's picked off by Elaine Lorminier. Well, that ball was chipped, went straight up in the air. Nice play defensively. Yeah, number two, Nick Krager made a great defensive play there, and that gives the Bucks some life. Yeah, Krager played at the Army. Well, we're closing in maybe on getting to the uh, end of the first quarter here, Trevor. Yeah, we, this, there's a chance that this will be the last play of the quarter. We'll get to the second quarter. We've actually set a record for the longest first quarter in the history of arena football. Caden Nelson in at cornerback right now. Saginaw Valley University. Yeah, Kyrie Boatman as well. All three, all three corners are new checking into this game. Going for a halfback pass potentially. Instead, Sanchez will be brought Sanchez down at the line of scrimmage. 33, Zach Watts on the side. Yep, Nelson, Ray Robinson, and Kyrie Boatman all are the corners. We should not get another play unless the Bucks really want to try and run one. Nice tackle by Zach Watts. Zach tackles. that'll be the end of the first that quarter. That is the end of the first quarter. The first quarter. The score, West, Michigan, we'll, turn, we'll turn things away to an ad. We'll be right back. We're more than just a financial institution. We're listeners, storytellers, and builders of relationships. We understand that everyone's financial journey is unique, and we're here to hear your story. Borrow together, save together, you're part of our family, and you're invited to become part of our community. Together, we'll create a brighter financial future for you and your family. Michigan Coastal Credit Union, where members come first, always. Muskegon is, is awesome because you get a little bit of everything. We're here, right here by the, we're close to the lake. We're right here, so we, our views are awesome. We have the city that's coming up from, that's getting, it's, it's building up within the city. A lot of new businesses, a lot of new buildings being built. If you want a little bit of the country scene, we still have that, but yet you're five minutes away from, you know, a shopping place or, you know, groceries, but still can be secluded a little bit from, you know, if you're not like in the city life, you know, you go out to Fruitport um, and, uh, you know, get a little country style, but yet, you know, you, you got everything right here. It's always a good time to be a homeowner. We are back wrapping up our hometown hero. Thanks to the bullpen. That's Eddie Alexander group, Mario Flores, the second transnation title. Definitely great to see all of those folks and shout out to our hometown hero this week. So coach, we've got some great sponsors here. Sure do. Great sponsors. 
A lot of activities here. Next, uh, what is it, uh, three weeks from tonight, we'll be going against the Detroit Knights back here at Hitsville. So make sure you make your plans. That'll be an interesting that'll be an interesting game. Yes, that'll be a game that I think is gonna surprise a lot of people for sure. Um, you know, a newer team kinda like the Bucks, but seem to come from seem to be coming from an area with a lot of talent that should be able to put on quite a game. I am so impressed with this crowd. It is quite packed in here. A lot of standing, folks standing as well. If everyone was sitting in a seat, we'd be pretty close to fully capacity. Oh, yeah, I mean the the walkways around here are just packed. So Santiago and the Bucks will take over second and ten from their own twenty, and the shotgun will send Ace Jones in motion. Come on up, son. There you go. Throws complete and gets out of a tackle and is going to be slung down by Zach Watts eventually. See where they mark. Looks like they'll give it out to the 24 yard line of the Ironman. The Bucks will have the ball in the Ironman territory for the first time tonight. <laughs> Trevor, yeah. Jay Hershey with the catch. Third down and four to go here. Keith Love having a whiz bang of a game, wreaking havoc up there. Pressure comes. Incomplete. Swing pass intended for Sanchez. Zach Watts on the pressure of Damian Santiago. Somebody better pick up Watts because I'm telling you, he's a one man wrecking crew tonight. Yeah, he has been all over the defensive backfield or the offensive backfield. Yeah. He had a uh, a cakewalk right to, right to the quarterback. Fourth and four coming for the Bucks. They have to get to the Ironman 20 yard line. Ace Jones will be in motion. He's alone to the bottom of your screen. He's got to go in motion. Come on. Here he comes. And they will let him get the play off. And it's intercepted. Coming back the other way. And he's got space. It's a touchdown. Caden and Nelson. His first game with the Ironman, and he finds the end zone on the pick he's six. In, he's in the record book, Trevor. Touchdown. That's five different players for the Ironmen have scored tonight. And three of them, or two of them on defense. That's right, because <laughs> Vandenbosch didn't score. We have Watts and Caden Nelson, who is fast. Right. Oh, he turned it on. He turned it on. 33 to nothing in favor of the Ironmen. Ben Townsend will come on to kick the PAT here to make it 34 to zero. This tri-state. Bucks team needs to approach Dick Cracker and see if he'll play for him after that second half. Kick is up. It is good. And the ball is lost in the net. We'll just have to wait for the next Ironman touchdown to try and get that one out. So the first, that was kind of the first drive where the Bucks looked like they had something going, and again came down to a mistake offensively. What what can you try and do? I mean, they've tried to run the ball, they've tried quick passes, they've tried to give extra protection. None of it is working. Is this a situation where you're just trying to make the best of a of a winless scenario? Trevor, they they barely have time to make the exchange from center to quarterback, and everything is blown up. It's blown up. So you see Mario, the owner of the Ironman, obviously a strong tie with Van Dyke Mortgage as well.
Ball's good and kicked deep by Ben Townsend. Ace Jones will take it and pitches back to Hershey who fumbles it a bit. He's going to get horse collar tackled at the 21 yard or by number 21 Jose Taylor with the tackle but that should be a 15 yard penalty in favor of the Bucks. Yeah he grabbed him with the uh, I believe they're going to call uh, I'm not sure I'd have to see it again if they're going to call it like a horse collar. I from up here it looked like it was a horse collar. Let's see what the call is. Personal foul, yep. Horse, horse collar. collar tackle. So the Bucks will once again find themselves in Ironman territory. Now oh they my can God. see if they can get some momentum going and get some points on the board. That kid went down faster than a Bud Light at Joe Tannis's house, I'll tell you that. That is dead. Again, this Iron Man team is so experienced. They're going to option pitch. Good pursuit. Ouch. Yeah, that looked like a Vandenbosch as well. Vandenbosch and Doug Woods combining on that tackle. Yeah, they, uh, you saw his neck get twisted right there. I actually like the look of that play from the Bucks. You run an option and you give the quarterback a chance to become that lead blocker, but do you really want your quarterback being the lead blocker? He has been beat to death tonight, Trevor. So in option football, it doesn't matter. Every play he's gotten, uh, he's gotten uh, two or three people with their face mask right in his chest. It's a good thing this isn't played on grass. Because you, uh, you wouldn't be able to see his number right now. Santiago looks, throws across the middle. Oh, what oh. a hit! An interception! Oh, and what a hit! Jay Hershey with a big hit, flexing hard, forgetting that they're down 34 to nothing. <laughs> but Zach Watts with one hand. With his left hand, Watts reached up. Look at the replay. Throw across the middle, one-handed, takes it away. Big hit there from Jay Hershey after the fact. They teach that. They teach that at Central Michigan University. That they do. You know, you got to be able to make plays like that with your left hand. That'll be on the highlight reel at the end of the year for sure. You got about four plays in this game that'll be on that reel. So we got Scott Rademacher checking in at center now. Anthony Younger moving to right tackle. Bo Johnson remaining at left tackle. Sterling Alexander will be the motion man. And, and Carter will take off. He's got some room. Takes a hit and goes down at the five <laughs> yard line. Number 14, Alex Carter on the keeper. Looks like there might have been a big pancake on the play by Bo Johnson. He's fired up. Boy, Carter's got some wheels, doesn't he? Let's see. Let's watch this. 55, Bo Johnson just absolutely oh, pancake yeah. number 71, Nick Pritchard. No opportunity. Yeah. And he was fired up. Yeah. First and goal from the five for the Ironmen. Might be Davion Taylor's territory once again. I don't think they'll have a problem getting in the end zone. Davion Taylor back in the backfield. There's the pitch. There it is. And he's in easily. Ironman touchdown, Davion Taylor. His second touchdown of the night. Toss sweep right there by Carter. Yep, got right in behind Anthony Younger, who got great pad leverage, really hooked without holding, and drove that defensive end out of that play. Townsend back on for the kick. Boy, this game looks like my first marriage. It was getting, over quick. Oh, and getting ugly. Look at that kick. Bam! Nice kick. That one is good. 
41 nothing as we are here at seven minutes 39 seconds left before halftime. Looks like we'll have a media timeout. Looks like that we'll have the Sparks coming out. That's the Iron Men cheer team. No, excuse me. It looks like we are kicking for cash potentially. Here we go. Oh, you're going to kick it soccer style. The further out you go, the more money you no can get. No good on that first attempt. Zach's first kick was no good from the five-yard line. He goes back to the 15-yard line. If he makes this, it's $50 Visa gift card. Come on, cheer Of course, course Zach Herrick working with local Fox 17 News channel. He didn't for him the first time. Come on, Zach. You're a sports guy. And not quite. I don't know if we should cheer or boo. See if he's got the 25. <laughs> and the third kick from the 25-yard line. If by some miracle Zach makes this, he'll get a hundred dollar well, gift card. Come on, Father's cheer him on. Let's go. Let's see Let's if he's got it. Make some noise. Let's go. He did it. It did oh, not well, quite get there. Good the attempt. Thank you, Zach, for coming back for tonight's game. And thank you, Michigan Coastal Credit Union. We are family. Well, he'll be kicking next year, obviously, for the Tri-State Bucks. Yeah. Of course, they need to score before they get to use their kicker, although... They did get to use their kicker to start the game, I guess, for the opening I, kickoff. I, so. You know, the, the opening kickoff of this game, when Tri-State kicked off, that's when we knew it was going to be the way it was, Trevor. Yeah, that is true. Okay, so the Bucks have no one. Now, again, the Ironmen aren't going to onside kick up 41 nothing, but they have they have no one within the 10-yard required for the onside kick. No, they don't know the rules. It's fumbled. Jones will pick it up, hand off to Hershey. Who? A fumble. Is, that's a forward lateral. That's an illegal forward pass. I, They're going to be fumbled. It. Let's see what the call is. I. It looked intentional from from my vantage. It's going to be 70 to nothing at halftime. Seven and a half minutes left. They're already four, 40 points there. You ever see the movie Slapshot? Uh, no, I have not. With Paul Newman? Yeah, this is kind of reminds me of the movie Slapshot. With Muskegon's Hanson brothers in it. Oh, okay, yep. I yep. don't think I've seen the whole thing, but I'm familiar with it. So a, lot of, the, a lot of people up in the concession stands. People still coming in from outside. So time running down on the box. This is safety territory for sure. You're right. You're right. And they're going to take their final timeout here of the first half. They were late getting someone out onto the field. I think one of the offensive linemen. And there's Leo Valdez right here shooting pictures. Leo's down here right now shooting and doing what he does best, zooming in. All right, Coach, since I, I'm really getting the feeling we're getting a safety here, I want to make – Oh, it's going to happen. Who's getting it? It's going to happen. Uh, it's definitely going to be uh, – Again, the way the way things have been going, watch for Zach. Watch. Keep your eye on Zach. He's, All right. he's real active. He has been active. He's been real I, I, active. Think, I think I'm leaning Ryan Armstrong. Yeah. They're trying to figure out. Again, I take the snap from under center and quarterback sneak.
Tried to draw him off sides. Hand off. There it is. There's your safety. There's your safety. It looks like Armstrong might have been the one on the bottom of the pile. Well, it's either him or Vanden Bosch. Let's take a look. First hit there by Willie Shanks. It looks like that was a nice tag team effort. Armstrong and Vanden Bosch. I tell you what, he dodged a bullet when the executioner missed him because Willie Shanks was coming. Yes, he was. Willie Shanks is the judge, jury, and executioner out there. I like the way that young man plays the game. He is worth the price of admission. So, Donovan Sanchez, the running back and kicker, will send things deep here for the Bucks. They're down 43 nothing. just under six minutes to play here in the first half. What is, what is San Diego, San Diego saying at halftime to his team? I think I'm thinking about folding. You know? <laughs> Sends it deep. Clay Oliver gets it. He's got a convoy. And he's got space. Oh, and he's taken out. Hershey is insisting on celebrating like they are not down <laughs> seven touchdowns. Now, at least he's is excited. Yeah, I you mean, know? he's got some juice I at mean, least. He's playing with some emotion and uh, an open field tackle. Everyone else on that uh, on that bench looks defeated. Right. Well, that's what I said. Sometimes you celebrate the little victories, and that's a little victory right there. And you know what? He's, he made a play. It came at him, and he made the play. Same offensive unit for the Ironman as the last drive. John Ross will be in motion. Tyler Bruce wide open. Touchdown, Iron Man! Wow. Carter picked him up. Tyler Bruce from Adrian College. I'm thinking we might be getting to the point where we see our backup Holsey James in the second half. I don't think there's a reason to rest Carter no. After halftime. No, no, no. He's just having, getting some snaps, having fun. That's uh, a sixth Ironman player to score in this first half. Spreading the ball around for sure. Thanks, of course, again to Under Par Golf, one of our important sponsors. Kick is good there from Townsend to make it 40 or 50 to nothing now. Four minutes, eight seconds remaining in the first half. I'm going to tell you what, Bo Johnson is one big human being. Six foot five, 310 pounds. And he looks all of it, too. When you look at that offensive line, he yep. is towering over the rest of the team. He can, he can, move, some, he can move some people. That looks not good. There we go. We got four minutes and some change remaining in this first half, Trevor. That we do, Coach. Townsend ready to send this one deep. It's going to be taken by Nick Krager. 
He's going to be picking up and driven to the ground by Ray Robinson. Out of Albion College, Ray Robinson comes up. Makes a nice tackle. Jose Taylor along with him on the tackle. Nice form tackle right there. How about this field position for him, Trevor? Yeah, another good start for them. They really just need to try and take Don't advantage forget. of the good field position for once. Don't forget three weeks from tonight, the Detroit Knights will be uh, coming in to the House of Pain. Yeah, that's a, a game I'm looking forward to. I think that's the one that's probably circled the most on the calendar. Yeah, you absolutely. see some of the other names on the schedule, potentially. It doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. The Detroit Knights should be a team that's well coached and well put together. Well, it'll be interesting to see. You know, they're not going to be able to get much off this film, that's for sure. No, this Ironman defense is smothering. I just like the fact that now we get a chance to look at our depth. They're going in a different direction. A.J. McComb will take over at quarterback. Throws, incomplete intended for Ace Jones. Number five, Jones. Jones is over there for Tri-State, number 11. He's pointing at the defensive back like he did something. He was lucky to get, get off the line of scrimmage. So I wonder if it was a coaching move or an ownership decision to set Damian Santiago at this point of the game. Yeah, he might be hurt. Who knows? Throws out to his right. He's oh! open. We got, and he caught it. Did we got a score? That's a touchdown, Tri-State. A.J. McComb comes in and on his first drive throws a bomb to Dominic, Dominic Parks. Parks. He's a wide receiver at six foot two, 225 pounds. Looks like they're gonna go for two as well. But I was not expecting that coach. Wow. You gotta give credit where it's due, they fought back. Obviously the, the hole has been dug quite deep. So it's the quarterback issue. Yeah, it's Santiago. And oh, oh. Sanchez. Looked like he had an opportunity. He kind of he kind of tripped and fell. Bannon Bosch put a stop to that two-point attempt. So 50 to 6 now. Clock still running as we'll approach the one-minute warning. Will be our last stoppage before halftime. Well. Good for this program. You know, in, in all honesty, you want to see good competition. You know, the people want to come in and see a, a competitive game. They want to see their home team win, play well. But uh, the bottom line is you, you want to see them challenged. And you want to see them how they uh, stand up against adversity and uh, meet the challenge and how they prepare for it. So, you know, that's what you hope for when you come in the doors and you watch the Ironman play. Yeah, I mean, good for the Bucks. They got they got a little momentum. See if they can take that into halftime. Well, and again, you know. So Sanchez will send this one deep. And Clay Oliver will take it. Pitch back to Ross. Who's going to be dragged down. Multiple fouls on the play. 38 seconds left here in the first half. Multiple fouls on the play. Yeah, the Bucks are good. Uh, looks like they just woke up a little bit, didn't it? Yeah. 80 on the tackle there. Lamar Stovall was the first one in on it. Davion Johnson jumped in there for the Bucks, and uh, you know he got a JOP, which the JOP is interesting because it usually causes a little friction between the players. The JOP stands for jump on the pile. Oh yeah. <laughs> Man. 
Van Dyke Mortgage. Mario Flores. Title sponsor. Referees discussing the penalty still. What do we got here? Come on, fellas, straighten it out. Holding against the box. And we got double fouls. So they're re-kicking. Blocking the back on the Iron Man, holding yeah. on the box. And nobody knows it though. One minute warning coming up here. Texas Roadhouse has the best steaks and burgers around. Texas Roadhouse. I have it's outstanding. Really? Yeah. The roll their rolls with cinnamon butter. Wow. It's it's real deal. Kadena Brothers Pizza. Usually we got one or two up here in the uh, box with us. I'm gonna say I got, I'm hoping we get one coming our way for for halftime. I'm a little a little famished. So the kick will come again. I just hope we get some Kadena sauce. I'll use it as cologne. Sauce is the real deal. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So Sanchez will send it deep again. There we go. Taken by Bruce. He's got room. Oh, what a move! Oh my, Tyler Bruce touchdown! 23! TJ Preston just got juked like no one else. Let's see this replay if they caught it because it was a great open field move. Here it comes, stuck his leg in the ground, whoop! And then he got laxed by one of the Ironman offensive linemen, wow. adding insult to injury. He put a glide and a stride and a dip in that hip and he went on home to the mothership. What a move. So the kick will be the last play of the half. Ironman looking to extend their lead to 51 before halftime. We will line up for the ether, and this is the uh, final play before halftime. Kick is up, and it's good. Both footballs that were trapped. And we got two footballs down. As we head to halftime, folks, your score, West Michigan Ironmen 57, Tri-State Box 6. Stick around for our halftime entertainment. We'll take a break right now and then we'll come back with our halftime entertainment. We're more than just a financial institution. We're listeners, storytellers, and builders of relationships. We understand that everyone's financial journey is unique and we're here to hear your story. Borrow together, save together, you're part of our family and you're invited to become part of our community. Together, we'll create a brighter financial future for you and your family. Michigan Coastal Credit Union, where members come first, always. It all starts with a Chevy truck. Chevy Silverado with the Turbo Max engine and best-in-class standard torque. And Chevy Silverado HD with up to 14 available camera views. Do more in a Chevy truck. Get yours now. Get $5,000 total value on Silverado LTZ and High Country models when you trade in an eligible vehicle. Or during Chevy truck season, get as low as 0.9% financing in all 2024 Silverado 1500 pickups. Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Ready, sauce? I'm low, so I'm going to start making that. But that is made homemade. So I'm making a batch because we're low. We cannot run out. Minced garlic. Cannot go wrong with putting too much garlic. I got this recipe and I learned this from uh, the Thanos. Ron and Bert Thano. Needs more garlic. 
I knew 30 years ago when they when they taught me that. Actually, we're at Ron Fano's mom's house, and she made me some spaghetti that was out of this world, which is this right here. Jen Smith. Ladies, the turf is all yours. Yeah, but I just, it's, you still got a wing. Just send it to Red. <laughs> Look at this. Hey. G. I had 4,000 people here. There's a ton of people here. This is awesome for the team. <laughs> look, at, look at Fred says. It all starts with a Chevy truck. Chevy Silverado with the Turbo Max engine and best in class standard torque. And Chevy Silverado HD with up to 14 available camera views. Do more in a Chevy truck. Get yours now. Get $5,000 total value on Silverado LTZ and High Country models when you trade in an eligible vehicle. Or during Chevy truck season, get as low as 0.9% financing in all 2024 Silverado 1500 pickups. Chevrolet. Together, let's drive.
Monte and their coach, Alexa Sidak. All right, it's time for the Kadena Brothers Dough Throw for Dough. Every morning, Kadena Brothers makes homemade dough balls that turn into the best crust in Muskegon County. Now is your chance to throw for dough. Somebody tonight is walking away with $100 in cash. The game is simple. When I say go, throw your footballs on the field. Get the closest to the target and you are a winner. The closest to the target will win $100 in cash. Second closest, a Texas Roadhouse gift card. And third closest, an Iron Man t-shirt. All right, Iron Nation, hit the target or hit rider. The choice is yours. If you're ready, here we go. In three, two, one, throw those dough balls. Hey, what's up, Effie? You having a good time tonight? This is going to be a tough call for Effie. You got to pick three of them, Effie. Come on, you and Gavin. Again, we want to thank Kadena Brothers for sponsoring our dough ball toss. We got to pick three. Which ones are we going to pick? $100 in cash. Texas Roadhouse gift card or an Iron Man t-shirt. We're gonna wind it down, get those last dough balls out there in three, two, one. Oh, the suspense is killing us. Who is going to win? The judges are making their determination. Here we go. They're running the balls to me. This is exciting. Right. Here, you guys can have that. I don't need it. Hey, don't forget. Oh, it was so tight, it was so close, but we have winners. Winner, winner, somebody's $100 richer. Football number 184 won $100 in cash. Football 319, Texas Roadhouse gift card. Football number 85, an Iron Man t-shirt. Head to the team store section behind the bullpen to claim your prize. Again, 184 for $100, 319 for a Texas Roadhouse gift card, 85 for an Iron Man t-shirt. Once again, we want to thank Kadena Brothers for sponsoring tonight's Dough Throw for Dough. What a cleanup crew we have out there. Yeah, are you I guess, yeah, I was just waiting. For, yeah, I don't know why I was waiting for you. I guess I'm so used to the Jacks. We're waiting for you. You're going <laughs> to. And then uh, whatever the next one is, right? your trusted spot for expert auto service. Stop in next week for their spring special savings. For $119.95, you get a full synthetic oil change and filter, tire rotation, inspection, and windshield wipers. Some res restrictions apply, so call ahead. Muskegon Brake, your auto service experts. Legend Sports Bar is a no-brainer for a West Michigan Ironman after party. After the guys sign autographs and shower, they head across the street to a real sports bar with that legendary Muskegon sports feel. Swing over after the game to celebrate tonight's big win. Legend Sports Bar. And now, Foundry Faithful, check out the video board to see highlights from the first half.
Welcome back, everyone. It's Trevor the new Kozlowski, joined by Coach Mike Taylor. Coach, everything went the way the Ironman could have hoped for in that first half. Well, and again, they didn't have to work for too much. You know, uh, I would say it was given to them on a it was given to them on a silver platter. And uh, you know, the one thing you don't want to see in a game like this, you don't want to see an injury. So you continue to play hard because you don't want to take a chance at slacking off and then getting hurt. Absolutely. The Tri-State Bucks found the end zone, surprisingly, after a well, quarterback change from the starter, Damian Santiago, to A.J. McComb. Well, and again, when you look at that particular play, the average length of a play for the Bucks has been less than one second before they had somebody in their face. The quarterback actually broke contain on that, bought himself two or three extra seconds. By then, the defensive backfield never expected a play to go that long. Yeah. And that's what it was, Trevor. Bucks are making their way back out. I want to thank, again, Bet and Chevy. We mentioned the West Michigan Chevy dealers. Bet and Chevy is one of the key sponsors for the Ironman. Without them, this stream and everything we do as an organization would not be possible. And we, Oklahoma, no, and we, I was just going to say, Trevor, you know, we had six different Ironmen score touchdowns, and we had a couple of them score defensively. So, again, we're seeing the Ironmen do what they do best, you know, get to the end zone. Yeah. Question will be whether Coach Mitchell decides to keep his starters out there to start the first half. Obviously, right. the, with limited rosters indoor, you're not going to be able to completely swap out your starters and whatnot. But the question will be at the quarterback position. Do you expect to see Alex Carter? And if you do, how long will he play into the second half? And yeah, and that'll be, you know, that's something I'm sure Alex and uh, Coach Mitchell discussed in that locker room at halftime. How many more series do you want? You know, what do you want to do? But I'll tell you what, you definitely want to make sure you de you have an opportunity to develop, your you know, your depth. Yeah. Get that some playing time and get some reps in there for that young man. So he's 17, Olsey James just made his way back out onto the field. We'll see if he ends up getting a series to start things out here or not. Bucks should be receiving to start the opening or the second half here. So see if they can get themselves some good field position. And it'll be interesting to see. I would guess they stick with McComb, right? If you get one offensive touchdown and a half, you probably roll with that guy to start the next half. Yeah, and that's a good point. And again, I don't know if uh, the starting quarterback sustained some kind of injury or they just want to test the waters, you know, and go on from here. Uh, what, whatever they had, it wasn't really working. It, come here. Oh boy. We got Nick the Cracker stepped in here. Nick, give us what Stay you give people, us a Nick. give us a few thoughts on that first half. Um, I mean, hey man, they're coming out firing. First play of the game's a touchdown for us. Um, I mean, look, the defense is playing lights out. Um, D line's doing their job. Obviously, that's what I'm focused on, and you know. I mean, hey, kudos to the other team. They they come out and they're they're trying to put it up against us. But I mean, 
Nick, I made, the, we're, we're I made the comment, Nick, at halftime, the Bucks would come and get you and want you suiting up. <laughs> well, they were, they were trying to suit me up before the game, but, uh, you know, kind of last minute, didn't have the right shoes or gloves or anything like that. I guess I'm just going to watch tonight. So. You know, Nick, we talked about your career a little bit and the, and, and the reason that you weren't playing this year. Yep. You know, you're healthy. You're, you know, you're doing well physically. You know, and, it, and it's that part of an athlete's career yep. that you got to step up and say, hey, you know, I got to make a decision what's best for my family and my situation. And you hit the crossroad, brother. Yep. Yeah, that's where we're at right now. I mean, with, with work and everything, uh, you know, I cover four states, but, you know, my wife has been very supportive. I mean, we've been married since college when I was still playing ball at Youngstown. And uh, she's she's been just absolutely amazing. So she kind of is the glue that holds everything together. And, uh, you know, but we got three little ones at home. My son's turning 10. He said he's going to get football tried this year. So it's kind of time to pass the torch. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, we hope that these home games at halftime, you come on up, stop up, give us a few words of wisdom, uh, your, your outtake on the first half, and love to have you be a part of what we do at halftime. Yes, sir. I'll be, I'll be around. I'm going to tell you, folks, Nick the Cracker. This, this man is a football player. Thanks, Nick, for stopping up. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Well, always great to hear from an Ironman legend like Nick DeCracker. He's the face of the program. I like that guy. Ace Jones back deep along with Jay Hershey for the Bucks. Townsend will send it deep to him. Right there's why I never got married though till I was 40. I never want my wife to say, hey, you can't do this or that. Into the end zone and through Let the it go in, in a crowd. But the touchback should come out to the five yard line here. So the Iron Man defense will start things off on the field first. Big half from Zach Watts, big half from Willie Shanks. We're going to see a lot of the starters, it looks like, initially here. We're, of, looks like we're going to see Damian back out here, who started the game for him. It does look like they're going to go with Damian Santiago. So yeah. Maybe, maybe they feel like they found something play call-wise that'll work, and they like his ability a little bit better, but... I tell you, Trevor, you work over you work over there at Legends Sports Cards in Grand Rapids. Yes, sir. Boy, you guys see some incredible sports memorabilia over there. Yeah, absolutely. It's the the premier sports card shop in Michigan. Without oh, a doubt. how do you guys find all that stuff? I, honestly, a lot of it finds us. Completed pass, Jay Hershey. He's got to be close to a first down. He is close. That was. A surprising catch nearly picked off, but they got it out. Hard to believe that play was practiced. Gain of seven on first down, second and three coming up for the box. Santiago completes his first pass for the second half. Jones in motion. There we go. Quick pass to Hershey. He's going to get upfield. Going to be taken out short of the first down. It'll be third and short coming up to the box. But two positive plays in a row, coach. Absolutely. And that's a first. That's a first. So, you know, uh, hats off to the Bucks right now. That's two positive plays right in a row. You're right. And uh, this is a legit, could be a legit first down for them. I don't think he's going to get it running, though. Looks like offside, probably. First down for the Bucks, thanks to an offside by Clay Oliver. Coach Tracy Lewis out here. Again this year for the Ironmen. I believe his son is coaching down at Alabama State. Okay. I saw him doing some running back drills on some video. I like the drills he was doing. Look good. Former Big Red. Yeah. 
We got a first down here. Let's Jones see. in motion. Little count counter play. Hand no. off and nothing doing there. Game of zero. Maybe a small loss. Keep him up, yep. Donovan Sanchez. See, these officials need to get a quick whistle on this one, Trevor, and I like that. These guys got to get up and go to work on Monday. Yep. You know? I think this is the longest this clock has run tonight without a touchdown being scored by the Ironman. Yeah, definitely. Second and ten, Santiago will go under center here. Or nope. He will stay in the shotgun. Happy birthday to Joe Tannis, his mom. She turned 38. Hand off again. Just not a lot of room to the outside. 36. One, Keith third. Love quick to make Take the tackle and get to the sideline. So third and long coming up here. I, I like to change the pace on first down, but I don't agree with running the ball twice in a row based on how <laughs> <You're right. laughs> how things have gone. I think you gotta at least try and well, throw the ball. And they're looking at it like if we throw the ball, it's probably gonna get intercepted. At least we can run the clock. Yeah, certainly a, a trade-off there. Hats Sound off again to Mario Flores, our fearless leader. Yes, sir. Santiago looks right, throws it deep. Oh! And off the scoreboard. Yes, incomplete to the scoreboard. Fourth and 14 coming up here. Um, maybe more like fourth and 12, but. Yep. That is a unique feature of uh, Trinity Health Arena. Yep. This was never, this was, ne this arena was built long before the invention of arena football. It was not designed with a roof height to support <laughs> yeah. a throw like that. Snap surprises Santiago, he throws, it's caught, but Hershey's gonna be stopped short. Turnover on downs for the box, they'll turn the ball over at midfield. Well, let's see who comes out at quarterback here for the Ironman. Carter is coming back out to start the second half. He's gonna at least get the first series, we'll see what happens from here. But. Sterling Alexander is going to be in motion to start things off. Carter rolls left. Throws incomplete intended for John Ross. Oh, that's his first incomplete pass of the night. Uh, second after the interception. Oh, that's right. Yeah. First one, yeah, but it was completed just to the other team. Yes, yeah, correct. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised that they, he really, that route ran right into where the coaches for Oh, you ran it right at him. Yeah. Yeah, you got to get those coaches out of the way. Absolutely. You have to be behind the line of scrimmage. Hey, uh, they, you know, when we talk about legends over there, you know, what is the most valuable? I'd say probably our Jackie Robinson rookie right now. Really? Yep, a graded Jackie Robinson rookie. Wow. Fumbled snap. Carter backs up and has room. John Ross will catch. No! He tried to run before he caught it. Incomplete. That play all wrong. Fumbled snap and then. Boy, and Carter could. Carter could have run that and still been running. So third and ten now. You know, a tip of the cap to Alex Carter's wife, and you know, we send out all of our prayers and everything for her going through a little rough time physically, and Alex hanging in there tight. So John Ross in motion. John Ross is getting into it with number two, Nick Prager. They're still at it.
There we go. And down here, the defensive lineman got his helmet stuck to Anthony Younger's helmet. They got stuck to one another. John Ross and Craig are down here going at it. Let's see the replay. <laughs> Carter delivered quite a stiff arm. That's a stiff arm of the year for Carter. I'm going to guess a personal foul going each way. One for John Ross, one for Craiger. Come on, fellas. We got an unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah, too bad. It might have been one of the first stops they had. Yeah. Defensively all night. Thank you. Thank you. So surprisingly, they only called one personal foul there on the box. Right. Nothing against the. I'm surprised by that. I would have expected offsetting at the very least. Well, actually, the officials caught the uh, the person who threw the first blow this time. Usually, they never catch it till the second. Intended for Tyler Bruce across the middle, incomplete, just behind him. Tell you what, they're giving they're giving Alex plenty of time to throw back there. Definitely, this is where it's a little tougher for the Ironmen to score, though. Everything's bunched up, not a lot of open receiver areas. Sterling Alexander will be in motion here. Carter looks. Plenty of time. Look Find at this. Open. Touchdown, Touchdown. Ironman. <laughs> Alexander, his second touchdown of the night. Sterling gets in a score about, block for a second How about time. that pass protection, Trevor? All day. You and I could have found an open receiver. Absolutely. There. That's when Carter goes up and says, Hey, thank you for that time, fellas. I got to look at everybody. Townsend will look to make it 64 to 6 as we cross under six minutes to go here in the third. Oh, we hit the hit the upright. No good. This second miss of the evening. It is now time for a media timeout. One of our on-field activities. We'll turn it over to our PA announcer, Lee Andrews. All right, Iron Nation. We have Joe Tenbrink from GE Aviation down on the field with Effie. And he has three chances to win that kayak. All he needs to do is hit the kayak with the football, and he will be taking home a kayak from Evoke Paddle Sports. All right, Joe, are you ready? Cheer him on, Iron Nation, let's go. Come on, Joe, let's see your arm. Oh, you gotta stretch it out, okay. Here we go. Fire away, first throw. Bounced over the top. Oh, Gavin's gonna move him a little bit closer. Come on, Joe. Too much mustard. Come on, Joe, one more try. Oh, Gavin's gonna move him right up there. I don't know, did he hit it? Did he make it? All right, congratulations, Joe. We want to give a special thanks to Evo Paddle Sports. The Evo Paddle Sports line offers feature-rich kayaks, perfect for the outdoor enthusiast looking for all the extras. Their vibrant colors, special attention to design, and outstanding performance capabilities are sure to inspire paddlers of all ages and abilities. 
Evoke Paddle Sports, the cure for anything in water. And again, Iron Nation, we want to All right, we are back. Iron Man lead 63 to 6. Sterling Alexander in the scorebook for his second time this game. It'll be interesting to see if they try McComb once again a quarterback or stick with Santiago. He said he wonder if it was play related, the benching in the first half, or possibly an injury, but they did score their only drive without him in the game. Absolutely. Hey, uh, uh, Trevor, uh, again, going for a master's degree, which you will have next December. How's that make you feel? Good. This December, actually. I finished my first year of school in 2022, or when I lived out in South Dakota. I'm now taking the same program online from the same school in South Dakota, just taking it online. Got it, got it. Got it. Good for you. Yeah. Feeling good about that. The Bucks have got to be feeling good about their field position starting at the 20-yard line of the Ironmen to see if they are able to uh, make any progress with it. So Santiago is out there to start this drive. Same offensive unit they've ran for most of the game here for the Bucks. See, they've actually backed the quarterback up a yard from the first half, and that's a good thing. Pitch. A halfback pass. Halfback pass. Good Incomplete. Motion. Nearly complete to Jay Hershey. Good, good coverage on the play, though, by Caden Nelson, who already has a pick six tonight. The only thing I did not like about that play, Trevor, is the young man is right-handed, and they ran him to his left. So he didn't have a chance to turn around and get set up. They should have run it to the other side. And he's right-handed. Yep, he could have made a better throw. Rolling to your right, throwing to your right is yeah. certainly much easier than what they yep. had him do there. I like the call. I like the call a lot. I do too. It gives them, you know, some more time to get out of the pocket and give them some some extra opportunity. All three receivers to the top of the screen. Santiago's going to scramble and get taken out by Derek Vandenbosch. Short game there of about four. Third down and six coming up for the box. We got a lot of people still sticking around, Trevor. Yep, have not had too many people clear out yet. Three weeks from tonight, the Detroit Knights invade the House of Pain. Strong tackle there by Clay Oliver. It will be a loss of four and bring up fourth and ten for the box. They got Anthony Younger in now at defensive tackle. Here we go. Fourth and ten coming up. Looks like we got Peyton Flores working for the program now. Yeah, the whole Flores crew is involved. Throw and caught just shy, one yard short of a first down caught by Parks, oh. but not quite enough to see, turn over on down. See, and that's where the lack of experience right there, knowing where the marker, you know, the chains are, that's the big difference right there, Trevor. And an experienced wide receiver. Media timeout. Yes. Don't be bashful. 
seconds left here in the third quarter. Ironman takeover leading 63 to 6 after the Bucks come up just a yard short on their fourth down attempt. Well, it took the Ironman, what, six seconds into this game to get on the board? Pretty close. Throw deep. Touchdown! Now that's how you throw a deep ball in Mercy Health Arena. That, that's how you avoid the score. Trinity, excuse me, Trinity yeah, that, Health That's Arena. how you avoid the scoreboard. Sixty-nine to six in favor of the Ironmen on what will likely be the last play of the third quarter, depending on how quickly this extra point comes. That's two touchdowns apiece for John Ross and Sterling Alexander, Davion Taylor, Tyler Bruce. Each have two scores in this game. Here's the kick from Townsend. It's up and good. So, Fox will run down to the end of the third quarter. Ironman leads 70 to 6. We'll go down to the field for our on field activity and our PA announcer, Lee Andrews. And at the end of the third quarter, it's your Ironman 70, Tri State 0. <laughs> Jackie Robinson, huh? Wow. Jackie Robinson rookie card. Yep. Uh, who made it? Leaf. Leaf? Yep. What's that card going for? I think we'll have it listed for 15000 Folks, we are ready to start the fourth quarter. Ironman leads 70 to 6. Ben Townsend will send it deep to Ace Jones and Jay Hershey. Union how about, a, how about our attendance tonight? We set a record 17,212. Yeah, all of those people in here. Awesome. Fresh coat paint, the proud official painter of 
the West Definitely Michigan. a great way to start the season here at the Foundry. When you talk about defending your title, Trevor, this is the way you want to do it. Just like our Iron Yeah, no better way than to come out, make a statement, get out of this thing hopefully unscathed injury-wise. Experience the difference of professional You know, I guarantee you, though, Contact us today I guarantee you, the Tri-State Bucks, they will be much paradise. better the next time they roll back into Muskegon, okay? They are going to learn so much from this experience. They're never going to let this happen to this degree again. Yeah. You know, they will be better prepared. They know what to expect. They know what work now they've got to put in to come back here with a much better product. Yeah, absolutely. Ace Jones will be in motion deep. And they didn't send him in motion. Throw is deep. Oh! Interception! What a play! Ray Robinson! Wow! Sugar Ray Robinson! What a play! How about that interception? What a leaping play. Kyrie Boatman also had good coverage initially. And the Ironman take over. When your body feels good, but Ray you Robinson good. went up and starts. took it down. That was probably the worst the spiral bracket. I've ever seen That's by a quarterback, Lengi though. Not great. Keep our guys in line so they can stay between the lines. Give them a call this week and you can experience the Iron Anchor Chiropractic Difference. Your Ironman take Carter over still out there at quarterback. The line. Ironman sticking with their starters still here into the fourth quarter. Are you surprised by that, Coach? <laughs> yeah, I, I, a little bit. Here we go again. In between the two receivers. First pass ball incomplete to number 12, Bruce. We'll say number five, Bowens, was in the neighborhood on the coverage. Brings up second down and 10 from the five yard line. Carter and Alexander going over the route right there. Yeah, hard to say where those two routes were supposed to be. I feel like maybe. Sterling Alexander a little closer to the wall, Tyler Bruce more into the middle of the field. Both ended up inside those numbers and right. kind of ball landed in between them. Second you and 10 here. You don't want two receivers that close together. Throw deep. Sterling Alexander. Oh! Incomplete. Curtis pass falls incomplete to number Good four. Good coverage there, Jay Alexander. Hershey. Coverage by the Bucks. Number three, Jay Hershey. Really being back in this kind of field position for Carter's fun because it gives him a chance now to throw a little bit. Yep, really let the ball yeah. loose. He doesn't have the short field. He's got the long field, and, and he can have some fun with it. You know, he can stretch line. the defense vertically. Selling Alexander in motion. Plenty of time for Carter, who's got Dross wide open. Stiff arm. He got it up for the first down. Yes, good tackle on the play by number two, Krager, but the first down for the Iron Man. How about Nick the Krager? He looks good, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He looks good. First down, Nick the Cracker, one of our heroes. First and 10 at the 23 yard We got a timeout. Timeout, Tri-State. Timeout, Tri-State. We got the some celebrities here tonight. tonight. Kid Stop Rock, Janet store. Jackson. Foundry Threads, located behind the bullpen. Three members the of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Of gears, and half of Willie Nelson's band. Yes, sir. We'll be right back after this quick video ad. For their high quality and creative work. Grab a Chevy Silverado with the Turbo Max engine and best in class standard torque. And Chevy Silverado HD with up to 14 available camera views. Do more in a Chevy truck.
Get yours now. Get $5,000 total value on Silverado LTZ and High Country models when you trade in an eligible vehicle. Or during Chevy truck season, get as low as 0.9% financing in all 2024 Silverado 1500 pickups. Thanks again to Benton Chevy and West Michigan Chevy dealers for being a proud sponsor of the Ironman. If you're looking for a new vehicle, make sure you check out Benton Chevy. John Ross is going to be in motion here on this play for the Ironman. Throw deep. Intercepted. And pushed down by his own teammate at the three yard line. Crater on the interception. Number two. I love it. For the Bucks. Clay Bowen tackled his own man back down on a five. It's a great the hit. Of yeah, New we are certainly entering safety territory prices. once again, and thanks to that service. blunder by Clay Bowen. is iron strong. Well, again, are you calling for a, a safety here? Yes. That a boy, Trevor. I'm gonna say. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take your pick from the first one. I think Watts is gonna be the one to take him down. Jamal Abbey, who's usually a corner, is playing defensive end now. <laughs> False start. McComb. We've got flags on the field. Of course, the false start's not really going to hurt when you're this close to your own end zone. And but they have once again <laughs> taken out Santiago. So oh my God. Unsure if it's an injury line. or a performance thing, but First McComb down, is back in for this drive. I like it. From the one yard line. I like it. Jamal Abbey crushed in high school over in Grand Rapids. He's gone from a defensive back to a defensive end. That's our speed package. That's yep. Joe Tannis' speed package at its finest. Yep, combined with Doug Woods, who started on the offensive line tonight. Got the pass away. Oh! The, the umpire got nailed, otherwise Zach Watts had a clean shot right at McComb. Down goes Frazier. Let's check out the replay. Right off the head of the official. He got hit right in the key, sir. Brings up second down from the one yard line. Third and 10 here. Excuse me, second and 10. And he throws it uh -oh, up. Uh -oh. Intercepted. Vandenbosch with a second. Runs over a couple of guys. His second interception of the game. Has not been able to find his way into the end zone yet, but he does create a second turnover. <laughs> yeah, he didn't find he didn't find the end zone, but it wasn't due to a media lack of effort. Timeout. And we'll take a quick media timeout. We'll head down onto the field with our PA announcer, Lee Andrews. Okay, Iron Nation, we have Kelly with us tonight. Everybody say hi, Kelly. She is playing a new game for the Ironmen, the under par super putt. Kelly will have three chances to make a putt from 10 yards away. Under each hole is a prize. Under one of the holes is an hour of free golf at under par golf. West Michigan's premier indoor golf located right here in Muskegon. Good luck, Kelly. Let's cheer her on. Let's see if she was watching the Arnold Palmer Invitational today. Her head is down, nice stroke, and just a little hard. I think we're supposed to be quiet for golf, aren't we? Nobody talk, I won't talk, I'll stop talking. Oh, one more try, Kelly, come on, line it up. You can do it, cheer on, we're not gonna be quiet for this golf. Come on, Kelly. And the putt goes, and no good. Nice try, Kelly. Give her a round of applause. Thank you.
to the bean. I didn't see it. Oh. We are back thanks to Underpar Golf, one of our sponsors for the Ironmen, doing that wonderful on-field activity. Ironmen are going to take over here on offense at the three-yard line of the box. Write it down. Should be Davion Taylor time right here, I think. Yes, no doubt about it. 5'8", 210 pounds. No, he's involved in a pass protection. Instead, Alexander. Sterling Alexander with a hat trick. Touchdown, Iron Man. And again, that's our seven. We go first to point number 77. A shout out. Evan Schufeld, six in the state, 270 pounds, power lifting. How about that for a high school person? He's married, has three kids, speaks four languages, two of them fluently. Ben Townsend on to try and extend this lead to 71. It got blocked. Clay Oliver tackled just short. But I think there should be a penalty. There should be a penalty. Because they're not allowed to rush. They're having a discussion. I don't think you're allowed to rush from where he did on that play. No, you're not. And the officials, they're talking about it right now. Evan Schufelt, their mother, Callie, is who I want to marry. Beautiful, lovely, talented ballerina, seamstress, and trombone player. So they're not going to call that, Trevor. They did not, although I'm sure they may have gotten the call right had the game well, been a bit more competitive. At I've least seen it, yeah, so, I've seen but. it before. Prejudice refs in tight uniforms. Boy, these home games are these home games here are fun though. Yeah, great. You know what an atmosphere. Great what, atmosphere. A lot of entertainment. Sure. I like the fact that the players engage with the fans. Yeah. You know, they walk all around and all the kids in the front row here, they run down there and get to talk and get a picture with the players. Ben Townsend getting ready to send this one deep. How about any any changes, Trevor, in the front offices for the Ironmen this year? You know, your role stays the same. Yeah, my role's pretty much the same. We've added a few pieces and, and shifted some things around. It's always uh, a strong group of folks helping make sure things run smoothly. This ball's set deep. Gonna go wide to Bowen. What happened? A young man stole the ball. Yeah, he, he, he decided that it was, it was going to be for him to get. And there's Leo Valdez down there in the front row, standing right great, next to the kid. Great view of it. Yep, great view of it. Leo recently got a haircut, second time this year. Leo's a photographer. Uh, actually, he's won some awards. He uh, does a lot of, lot of, shoots a lot of film for the local sports journal, 
Leo believes in seven of the Ten Commandments and is a 100-yard dash champ in high school. So who do we have now? Raheem Stokes, also a defensive back, playing defensive end now. Handoff, tackle, quickly made. How about Stokes? Shot up field off that defensive end, adjusted, came back and made the tackle from behind. Yes, he did. Oh, is he quick? Second down and about nine here for the Bucks. As we approach three minutes remaining here in the game in the game. You know, I don't think I've ever broadcast the Ironman in a losing game. I believe they've only lost four times since I joined the organization in 2018. Wow. Jones in motion. Throws caught. Brought down immediately. Strong tackle there by Vandenbosch and Nelson. Uh, we need to congratulate Coach Mitchell on his uh, first win. Yep, Coach Terry Mitchell's first win as an Ironman coach. Yep. Jones in motion. Fumbled snap. Thrown up in the air. Caught it's by caught. Hershey. And a first down for Tri-City. They're running hurry up. You could tell they practice that. Thrown, intercepted. Caden Nelson, his second interception for a touchdown today. I thought they were gonna call him out. I thought there was a chance, but. And we got a player down in the back of the end zone with a knee injury. And that's not what you want to see. Training staff out to check on Jay Hershey, who's been a crucial player for the box. Traviante Ali, big offensive tackle standing next to him over there. Six foot two, 345 pounds. Who do we got that down over there? That was number three, Jay, Jay Hershey. Hersey. He's a big part of this team too. They can't afford to lose him. They can't afford to lose anybody. Right. Looks like Hersey's gonna be all right. Is he up? Need some teammates to come help him. No one paying attention. Finally get a couple of guys out there. Yeah, they got to get a couple of the big boys over there. Ace Jones just got over there. Ace will take him. Oh, yeah, they pick him right up. Yeah, look at him. He's all right. He's a warrior, Trevor. Yep. Block will run again. We'll run down to the one minute warning and then we'll have maybe one or two more plays left in this game before things are all finished. Townsend looking to make it 83 to six here for the Ironmen. 
Kick is up. Kick is no good. Wide to the left again. One minute warning is arrived. Get our last on field activity. Send this one down to our PA announcer, Lee Andrews. I tell you, Trevor. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Sorry. I, just, I just sent it down the line. Selfie. They're down Selfies there? Yeah. will be posted on our Facebook page on Tuesday. It's selfie time. All right. Well, now that we'll send it back up here. What did you want to say, Coach? Well, let's talk we about got a the of selfies all over the place. We saw their first performance on this Ironman team. And the uh, they were the actually, you know, man. some interesting performances and, and making, selfies, you know, when we look at these guys, how many of them made some plays tonight? Yeah. And boy, I'll tell you what, we look at guys like Caden Nelson, all right, and Ray Robinson, uh, you, you know, Tyler Bruce. I mean, we saw some young people come out here tonight and really jump right in the thick of things and contribute heavily. That's got to make, uh, that'll make Coach Mitchell and his staff real excited about this year's rookie group. Oh, absolutely. I think Caden Nelson, you see one name that is missing from last year that I noticed, LJ Buter. Yes. Caden Nelson's kind of filling that same role. The tough nose, undersized maybe, not necessarily in height, but just a little lighter defensive back. And it's really looked great today in his first game with the Ironman. Right. And again, we want to give our best to Alex Carter and his wife over there. And uh, our thoughts and prayers are with you guys. And keep struggling. Keep, I mean, keep, keep, keep uh, fighting and beat the struggle here. Yeah. Last minute of the game, see if anything changes score-wise. Of course, the Ironman would like to keep pouring it on. Bucks are hoping to keep it where it is. Maybe they can find a way back into the end zone themselves. Townsend will send it deep. Krager and Jones back deep. How about this crowd? You know, when the, uh, you talk about the upper management, Mario and all you, know, all you guys see the crowd like this. And that's got to be a great feeling. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's one of, and, and even, you know, it's cleared out a little bit. I mean, the game's almost over. The game hasn't been competitive in a while. But a lot of people sticking around. It's great to see this for the opening night of the season. Uh-oh, we got him crawling over the, into the stands. That's illegal. <laughs> had, had one too many. Sterling made his way off. Doug Woods also tried to make his way off. Owen will go just shy of the end zone. Krager will pick it up. And he will be hit by Kyrie Boatman at the 17 yard line. Twenty-three, TJ Preston still down. We got another buck. Yeah, TJ Preston down for for the Bucks. So yeah, as you've mentioned a couple times tonight, Coach, next Ironman game in a couple of weeks, Detroit Knights right. should be a really good game. Well, and I'm not sure if the Detroit Knights that'll be their first game, Trevor, or if they've got will have a game under their belt by then. Yeah, I'm not sure what the what the other teams in the league schedule looks like, but uh, I'm hoping for their sake they at least find an, or have an, an opponent before then. Got it. Yeah, that's important. You know, all these games I've been to broadcasting here, I've never seen the medical staff have to come out on the on the floor during the game, and I've seen it twice in the last 15 minutes. Yeah. Hopefully no serious injury there. One 
once again want to thank some of our big sponsors, Van Dyke Mortgage, Kadena Brothers Pizzeria, Under Par Golf, Benton Chevy. Could not make what we have going on happen without all of our key sponsors. This should be the final play of the game, coach. Maybe, if we can get there. He is the biggest wide receiver in the league. 17? Yeah, 6'2", 235. Santiago will take the snap on what should be the last play of the game, sending 15 in motion. And the handoff, flea, oh, flea flicker. flicker. Bat it up. Uh, conflicting pass. signals. Looks like they're going to call incomplete. That's an incomplete. Yeah, that, that's going to do it. Clock is stopped, but should be just about finished here. Clock is running. And that's going to do it, Trevor. First game in the foundry for 2024. Your Ironman win 82 to 6 over the Tri State Bucks. Thank you everyone who tuned in. Thank you for the incredible crowd that made their way out to the foundry tonight. We'll look forward to seeing you guys back here in a couple of weeks when the Ironmen take on the Detroit Knights. Coach. Trevor, Trevor great working with you. Congratulations on your marriage. And uh, you know, going back to school for that Masters, you got that almost knocked out. And uh, look forward to three weeks from tonight. Sounds good, look forward to seeing you coach. Thanks to everyone for tuning in. Have a great night. Drive home safe. Thanks to everyone. It all starts with a Chevy truck. Chevy Silverado with the Turbo Max engine and best in class standard torque. And Chevy Silverado HD with up to 14 available camera views. Do more in a Chevy truck. Get yours now. Get $5,000 total value on Silverado LTZ and High Country models when you trade in an eligible vehicle. Or during Chevy truck season, get as low as 0.9% financing in all 2024 Silverado 1500 pickups. Chevrolet, together let's drive. Hey, this is Bill, guys. We're at Lakeshore Golden Cards here at the shop. We got Will here, William Bedford. We're super excited. We're definitely big Pistons fans. 90s, the bad boys, man. It was That was the time to watch basketball. I appreciate you stopping in Michigan here and the small town, small card shop. Bedford gets it back, gets it down. Best small town card shop in Michigan. We're more than just a financial institution. We're listeners, storytellers, and builders of relationships. We understand that everyone's financial journey is unique, and we're here to hear your story. 
Borrow together, save together, you're part of our family, and you're invited to become part of our community. Together, we'll create a brighter financial future for you and your family. Michigan Coastal Credit Union, where members come first, always. I am the owner of Under Par Golf, which is an indoor golf facility here in um, Muskegon, Michigan. We have over 85 different courses you can play with. Six screens, five flat, one curve. We got top golf games that you can play. We got some virtual mini golf courses, some fun little chipping games like darts, beer pong, cornhole. Just a fun guys night, bachelor parties, company parties. You name it, we'll host it. We also do lessons, uh, club, bidding, club building, club repair. Uh, fittings, you name it, anything about golf, we're able to pretty much do here.